Hello, I'm David Guthrie with His Word Lives Ministry, and I want to welcome you to this Christian ministry once again. We're excited about starting the book of 1 Peter today. Peter, apostle of Jesus Christ, one that walked with him and talked with him and heard the words of the living Christ, Jesus, in his lifetime. And he writes some scriptures down here today telling us about how salvation was brought by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit here at the first part of chapter 1. And let's read this now. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Peter is addressing this epistle to those that have come and believe that Jesus is the Christ and have received uh, uh, and being obedient to the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, which covers and makes it possible for the sins of the world to be washed away, that a man can be forgiven for his mistakes, and that grace and peace be multiplied upon those that believe. God's grace and God's uh, peace can be inside, and, and a person can live with that inside of them, knowing God, and having a relationship, and knowing that God foreknew that there was a way coming, that mankind could be forgiven for their sins through His Son, Jesus Christ. Oh, do you believe in Jesus? Have you come to a point in your life where you made a decision, what are you going to do with Jesus? Are you going to believe in Him or not? I hope that you've come to that point in your life where you can say that this scripture that Peter is writing is addressed to you. Ones that believe. Ones that have been obedient to the Spirit that called upon you one day and told you you were lost. You were going to die and go to hell. But instead you were obedient and you believed that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that through Him you can be saved and, and have the gift of eternal life. That the Father foreknew and told about this in the Scriptures. Let's go on reading here. In verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which abundant, according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Listen, if you believe, you've got a reservation. You've got something that no one can ever take away from you. It's reserved. It's perfect. It'll never fade away. And it's reserved in heaven where God is for you. Won't you come and know Jesus today? This is important. Verse 5 says, who were kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice that now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Listen, just because we're saved, that don't mean that our faith isn't tried. It doesn't mean that we don't experience different types of testing that God allows for us in our lives. 
so that we can show out our belief and our faith and grow when we make mistakes and be forgiven and know the grace of God in our lives and know that we overcome temptations and know that we pass the test and know that we are, can stand up through the power that lives inside of us and do the right thing and take on the righteousness of God during these temptations. Praise God for salvation. Verse 7 says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found <clears throat> unto praise and glory, unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Don't you look forward to seeing Jesus one day? Don't you look forward to seeing the one that gave you His grace and mercy and salvation and went to the cross and made it possible for sins to be forgiven. Verse 8 tells us, Whom having not seen, we've not seen Him, yet love, we love Him, we love Jesus, in whom, though now you see Him not, Yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. <clears throat> oh, we praise Jesus. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Listen, there's an end to your faith. There's going to be a day when you, you don't need faith anymore because you'll have, have uh, uh, Jesus with you. You'll have a, a, a relationship with Him. You'll be with Him face to face. You'll see the end of your faith in salvation because you'll be saved and you'll be in heaven with Jesus forever and ever in a new body, in a body that'll never, be, that'll never wear out, in a life that'll never have sin in it. One day we'll overcome completely in a glorified body and way. Just like Jesus is. In, in glory. Amen. And our souls will be saved forever and ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Let me tell you, verse 10 says, Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesies of the grace that shall come unto you. Listen, the prophets of old, they looked into this. They were curious and wanted to know more about <clears throat> God's saving grace and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in all men and the salvation and the gift of God. <clears throat> in verse 11, these prophets, let me read on, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. They testified, they prophesied about the crucifixion of Christ and about the glory, the perfection that that would make possible in man that we should follow the, the crucifixion and the resurrection and what all this meant. These prophets, they told of this. <clears throat> unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desired to look into. These very things that I've been preaching to you in this message today is what's being talked about here. How the prophets revealed not the things that, that was happening to them, 
but the things that was going to happen in our time, in this time, in the church age, in the time when people could be saved and have God the Holy Spirit come and live inside of them and be forgiven for their sins and have a Savior in Jesus Christ and be a part of the family of God with God the Father. These things which were prophesied about of the Holy Ghost being sent down from heaven to live inside of each and every believer, which things even the angels desire to look into. We'll stop there here for now. We'll pick up with verse 13 next time. I thank you for being with us today. I want to pray for you today. <clears throat> What's going on in your life? <clears throat> are there things that are hindering you in your Christian walk? You know you're saved. You know you believe. But you just don't feel the, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You're letting Satan get in the way and hinder you and drag you down. Even though you got the power to overcome him and live a life full of peace, full of grace, and to know and feel and see Jesus in your mind and in your heart speaking to you and telling you how to live an abundant life. Let's pray for that today. Dear God, we come to you. We lift up this prayer request to you, God. That, Lord, we would just see you in these things that we've read about here today in the start of this epistle of, of, of 1 Peter with, and what he's telling us has happened <clears throat> and the grace and the, and the peace that's been bestowed upon those that believe in you. God, I pray for this. I pray for an abundance of this. I pray for an abundance of the Spirit in each and every person that's listening to this message today. God, I just pray, Lord, that they just know You through, your, through our faith and our belief and our desire to draw close to You and live in Your Spirit each and every day of our lives. God, we just praise You for the salvation, the gift that You've given us. Oh God, we just thank You for sending Your Son, Jesus, that we could be forgiven for our sins and walk with a lightness of heart, and walk with a knowledge of knowing we've been forgiven for the things that we made, the mistakes that we made in our life. God, we just praise you and lift your name up on high, and look forward to being with you one day in glory, in a new body. Oh God, we look forward to our heavenly inheritance. And all of these things we pray because of what your son Jesus did on the cross. And we pray in his name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. God bless you and have a wonderful day. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Have a great day. Thank you for tuning in today. <clears throat> Let me invite you <clears throat> to a benefit singing that's happening this coming Saturday evening at 5 o'clock with a uh, dinner, barbecue, and hot dog plate starting at 5 o'clock and singing at 7 o'clock. This is a benefit singing for Rydal Baptist Church. It's on Highway Interstate 75 in Cartersville at the Red Top Mountain exit. <clears throat> if you're going south, you'd get off and you take a right and go towards Rome. You go straight out, uh, take that right, and just keep going straight for about five miles, <clears throat> and the church will be on your left. It's being held at Creekside Fellowship Church. So come and join us. Come and worship with us in, 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 a, in a music <clears throat> benefit singing for the building at Rydal Baptist Church that's uh, in Rydal, Georgia. Come and help us and 
and, and worship with us and sing along with us. Uh, you're invited. Thank you very much. Have a great day. God bless you. Thank you. <clears throat>